Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky addressing Israel's parliament, the Knesset, in West Jerusalem. This is the latest chapter, uh, latest video link, rather, to lawmakers around the world to drum up support. Uh, let's break this down right now. Joining us now from New York is Shai Franklin. He is a senior fellow at the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute. Shai, always good to have you on the show. Um, we all see, are seeing that the Ukrainian president has been sort of making these uh, video link addresses to uh, parliaments of more than a half dozen Western countries around the world. And with each one, there is um, a specific angle. When he was talking to uh, the U.S. Congress that was uh, mentioning to, uh, to this being Ukraine's 9-11, when he was addressing uh, the German parliament, the Bundestag, he mentioned the Berlin Wall. And with Israel, the significance is obviously his, his Jewish uh, heritage, his Jewish background. Yes, the, his own personal Jewish background, also the uh, tremendous ties between people in Ukraine and people in Israel. There's a lot of trade, a lot of uh, culture, and a lot of family connection. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Israelis today are from Ukraine. And also he mentioned specifically the Holocaust, which is not only a personal tragedy for many Jews, but as a call to action, has been trumpeted as a call to action uh, around the world to stop not just the extermination, future extermination of Jews, but the future extermination of any people. And particularly at this time when, when Ukrainians are being targeted, whether it's technically a genocide or not, we're seeing mass murder, we're seeing targeting of civilians, we're seeing major war crimes, which really mirror many of the war crimes that were, that were judged at Nuremberg. Um, Shai, um, you, you say that there are a lot of Israeli citizens that have their heritage, their background, uh, uh, from Ukraine, but the, the fact of the matter is that nearly uh, one out of every 10 Israeli citizen also has roots to, uh, to Russia, to the former Soviet Union. I mean, Israel, it can be perceived as, as walking a, a fine line between uh, Moscow and Kiev. I mean, does it, do you feel that it risks being uh, seen as, as unbalanced? Is, is, that a, is that a fear that's uh, going on in, in Jerusalem? Yes, well, first of all, many of the Jews who came from the Soviet Union came from what is today the state of Ukraine. But, uh, but you're right, there, there, is a, there is a conflict. There's a, there's a conflict in terms of sympathies, but in terms of the ideas on which Israel is built, uh, I, I, I think it's really not, not much of a competition. I mean, what we see is going on, and he even quoted Golda Meir, who said, Zelensky, President Zelensky quoted uh, former Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir, who was actually born in Kyiv, and grew up in the United States before coming to Palestine and then became Israel. She said that basically, uh, I didn't get the translation quite right, but something to the effect of uh, the Israelis are, we're fighting for our existence, and the Arabs at the time who were attacking were fighting for, to, to try to kill the Jews. So that's, he said, that doesn't leave much room for compromise. Mm -hmm. So in, in terms of, you know, the aggressor, I think it was Elie Wiesel, basically, who one of the people who really made the Holocaust this, this central guiding force for, for moral clarity in the 20th century and, and now in the 21st century, he said that neutrality helps the perpetrator. The perpetrator today is clearly Vladimir Putin. Yes, there are also uh, Israeli Russians who are oligarchs who are close to Putin, who are so far, I think their assets have not been frozen in Israel. They are free to move back and forth. So that, I think there's still flights between Moscow and, and Tel Aviv. So it's, it's very problematic. Israel is trying to have it both ways, but you can't have it both ways and be a moral force in the world. And so for me, it's personally uh, disturbing right now. Since you mentioned uh, Golda Meir, um, uh, let's continue with, uh, with Israeli politics. I mean, the dynamics within uh, this Israeli politics is, is, is a delicate one. I mean, the former prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is considered a close uh, friend to uh, President Vladimir Putin. Uh, Foreign Minister Yair Lapid has repeatedly condemned the Russian invasion, but uh, the Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has refrained from doing so. Yeah, they're, they're trying to cover their bases, uh, which is normal for, for any country to do. But right now, Israel is one of only a few countries in the West that are not providing any, any sort of uh, material assistance to Ukraine to withstand the Russian attacks. Humanitarian assistance is, is important, that's great, but if Russia could be stopped, there would be no need for all of that humanitarian assistance. And providing Band-Aids after the fight isn't the same as stopping the fight. The mediation that's going on now, but Turkey, I know, is involved, Israel is involved in trying to do some mediation. Uh, Netanyahu would have been happy to do this kind of mediation, but 
as you say, he was seen as, as more on Putin's side. When he was prime minister in 2014, Israel didn't even attend the UN General Assembly vote to condemn Russia's invasion of Crimea. This time, at least, under Bennett and Foreign Minister Lapid, Israel did vote to condemn the, the uh, invasion but uh, in the General Assembly. It was, would have been one of only four or five countries that voted against if it hadn't. Some countries abstained. At least Israel, to its credit, did, did vote in favor to condemn. But, uh, but now there's, there's the next step, which is what are you going to do? Is, again, Israel's doing a lot of humanitarian assistance, which is very important. Uh, but Israel also does hold a veto on the provision of American systems, American air defense systems, to Ukraine. And so far, they have not agreed to allow those, the, the transfer of those systems. Okay. Charles Franklin, we'll leave it there. Always a pleasure having you on. Thank you for joining us here on this Sunday morning.